Here I'm going to explain a couple of ways of reading input and flushing the keyboard buffer. And I hope these are going to avoid the problems that I've had in previous programs. And you find this new code in 04 underscore readlin. Now this is also going to give me a chance to go over some of the nitty gritty details of reading input reliably from the command line. And I hope it should help you to understand a bit better what's going on here. Okay, so let's start looking at the code. Here is my first version of a function that I've called readlin, which safely reads a line of text and assigns it to an array of characters. And the array here is declared in the function header as char s and then a pair of square brackets. As in my previous projects, this function uses f gets to read a string of characters. The max len parameter specifies the maximum number of characters to read, and I use the built in function strlen to get the length of the string. The if block tests if the character at the end of the string, that is, at the position given by len underscore s minus 1, is a new line character, slash n. And if so, it replaces this new line character with a null character, slash 0. Remember that the null character is used in C to indicate the end of a string. Finally, I've used the rewind function to flush the keyboard buffer, instead of my own flush underscore input function, which I used in previous programs. It turns out that rewind is used to move the focus back to the beginning of a file. Technically, it repositions the file pointer to the beginning of a file, but it has another handy trick. Now, I checked the Microsoft documentation before I wrote this program, and that's where I found out that it has the uh, effect of clearing the keyboard buffer. That is, when stdin is passed to the function rewind, the keyboard buffer is cleared, according to the Microsoft documentation. Well, that's easy enough, and I've tried it out on Windows, and it works fine, and I tried it out on my C setup on the Mac, and it works fine too. The trouble is, I'm still not really 100% certain if this is going to work with all C compilers on all operating systems. I've searched online and it sounds to me as though people are a bit uncertain themselves about this and the implementation of the function, as with some other functions such as fflush, which I've mentioned before, well, it might be different with different C compilers and C programming systems on different operating systems. So I can't really feel com comfortable that it's definitely going to work with stdin to flush the keyboard buffer, and that's what I want. So that's when I decided that it would probably be safer, better, uh, even for my own confidence in my code, to write my own function to deal with a line, to read it in, and to flush any characters when that's necessary. So let me show you what I did. Let me comment out this version. And look at my next version. Right, so this is the version of the function that I wrote next. It's still called readlin, but it's implemented in a different way. This one reads the text entered at the keyboard one character at a time. All the reading is done using getchar. So I no longer have to worry about any side effects due to the new line character that may or may not have been handled by fgets, as in my last uh, version of the function. Now remember, we've seen in previous programs that sometimes I've had problems because fgets reads in the new line character itself when the user presses the enter key. And I, I wrote a function that tried to flush the keyboard buffer, but the function that did the flushing, if you remember, also tested for the new line character. And so that caused problems of two functions doing different things with the new line. Well, my new function here processes every character one by one. So it assigns the characters required to initialize variables, and it also processes any additional characters in order to flush the remainder from the keyboard buffer. So this is how it works. The while loop continues getting characters as long as any characters remain to be processed. 
I use an integer variable called chars underscore remain to test whether the loop condition is true or false. This variable has the default value 1, which I've set up here. Now in C, a non-zero value is regarded as meaning true when it's tested, so that starts off with a true value. And it becomes zero, which is equivalent to false, when there are no more characters left. So here it becomes false when the new line or EOF are found. A new line will be found at the end of the input string, at the point at which the user pressed the enter key. And until the new line is found, the while loop continues running. At each turn through the loop, the i counter variable is incremented. The code fills the character array, s, with the square brackets, by appending each character that's been read as long as i is less than maxlen minus 1. And here, 1 is subtracted to allow for the terminating null character. The value of maxlen indicates the length of the character array variable that was passed to this readlin function. Once i is equivalent to or greater than maxlen, the code stops adding characters to s. However, that doesn't mean that the while loop stops running. Recall that this loop only stops running when a new line or EOF are found, and that might be either before or after I finished adding characters to s. If it's after s has been fully initialized, then the reading of characters in the loop just serves the purpose of flushing the buffer, that is, reading and using up any characters that I don't need. And finally, I've explicitly put a null character, slash zero, at the end of the s array. And remember that the null character marks the end of the string. And at the end of this function, I return the value of i, which gives the length of the string, not counting the terminating null character. Well, the proof of the pudding is in the running of the program. Let me try it out. So, I'll try it first of all with fewer characters than will actually be read. So I'll just put one, two, three. That is fewer characters than needed to assign to the variables. A, B, C. No problems there, that works fine. The other problems that we've had previously are when I put too many characters, more characters than can be assigned to the variables. So that's more than I need. And again, one, two, with some uh, alphabetic characters here. Again, no problem. The characters read in and the values assigned, the characters assigned to the strings, are truncated to make sure that they fit in the uh, character arrays that I'm going to be using for storing the strings. And because my readlin function continues reading through any remaining characters, the uh, buffers are also flushed, so I don't get any characters being assigned, being read in in the wrong place and assigned to the wrong variables, which is a problem that I had in a previous program. So there you are, two versions of my line reading function.